Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to talk about some Doctor Who. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. Um, I don't know if I've gone over Doctor Who yet in any of my videos or not, so uh, this might be a first. Um, first and foremost, uh, I've been a Doctor Who fan <laughs> since probably the early 80s. I, I don't really remember it in the, night, in the late 70s. I don't even, I'm assuming it was on here um in you know in america because uh, it was it was the fourth doctor episode which is episode, or for me specifically um it's uh seasons let's see 14 15 i think i will i got it if i got the wikipedia page we'll pull it up on that i, I can never remember what the seasons were um as much as a sorry as much as a doctor who fan as i am um i'm not really a doctor who fan does that make sense uh Meaning, I'm not a diehard Doctor Who fan by any stretch of the means. Um, it, for me, it's it's pure nostalgia. It's pure um, child boyhood crush. <laughs> um, not on Tom Baker, of course, but on Leela. Um, as far as his companions, uh, the companion I was, you know, that I was obsessed with was Leela. Um, and so, I w the thing is, I was catching the episodes right about the time um, <clears throat> they were, uh, obviously, the rerunning. I think it was Channel 56 here in uh, the Detroit area used to play it. Uh, was that or 62? I think it was 50. It was a UHF station. It was a local UHF station that was uh, playing the reruns of it. And I remember catching it. The first time I caught it was at a neighbor's house. Um, I remember we went to, I went to a neighbor's house and they had on, they were watching Doctor Who. Um, and I saw, you know, for the first time I saw Doctor Who with, you know, Tom Baker was very striking, you know, very tall guy with that long scarf, you know, his crazy beady eyes and the hat. And, uh, and it, it had that weird quality, that video, you know, like soap opera kind of shot on videotape quality to it. And I didn't know what it was. And of course, you know, the neighbors, I think they had a younger son who was probably in their twenties at the time, or maybe even late teens, high school. I was, you know. So it would have been like 1980, 1981. Um, I said, uh, what's that? And they're like, well, that's uh, Doctor Who. I was like, oh, what channel's that on? It, they told me whatever it was, 56. Um, you know, so anything was on in the evening. So I was like, oh, I gotta watch this. And then I remember going to another friend's house um, and his older brother, and uh, I think the older brother and the older sister were sitting around watching the Tom Baker Doctor Who. So. It was like, that was the Doctor Who that I first, you know, came in contact with. And I always wondered, what, 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 what is Doctor Who? I don't get it. And, uh, and I also remember going to um, Rochester Book Center, of course, remember I keep telling you about that, and going through all the science fiction books, and I came across the Doctor Who books, the novels. Um, I had a couple of them. Um, and of course, I'd never read them. I ended up reading them later on, uh, after high school. No, I was in high school. Yeah, because I was, I was, Doctor Who was on, I, it was, I can't remember the Doctor at the time. It, it wasn't a doc. it wasn't, uh, the fourth Doctor. I uh, wasn't the fifth, sixth, I want to say maybe the seventh Doctor, I guess, um, or eighth. It was, uh. The short guy, uh, what's his name? He was in he was in Lord of the Rings too, as as the guy with the with all the uh, I can't remember what he was the Rat King or I don't care what it was. It was the uh, one uh, wizard who had all the animals. Uh, the guy's name's on the tip of my tongue. Sorry, I can't remember it. Um, I know Mel was his, and then Ace became. I liked Ace. I actually I liked Ace a lot. Um, but they became uh, they were the the. Uh, companions of that doctor and that that was literally brand new when i was in high school um i remember that was a that was that played on that saturday nights i think at like 11 p.m it was funny because that's how i discovered red dwarf so basically channel 56 would play the um new episode of doctor who and then right after that they'd play Re or vice versa and then they played another episode of um red dwarf I, can't, I loved Red Dwarf. I liked Red Dwarf actually better than I liked that Doctor Who. Um, but also, I'll get back to high school again. So, um, 
And this also ties into Tor Tor Tuesday, if you watched my Tor Tor Tuesday in my anime video. Not that this has anything to do with anime, but... So, like I said, I've, I've always loved Doctor Who, you know, specifically that Doctor. I, I've tried to go back and watch other Doctors, and it just doesn't do it for me. Because it just, it doesn't, I, I can't, it doesn't, you know, even the new Doctor Who's, you know, I watched most of them up until I think, um, towards the end of the Matt Smith, uh... I think I watched the end of the Matt Smith run, and then I was out. I didn't watch any more. I, not for any of the controversy or anything. I just got bored of it because it was just boring. Um, I liked the Chris Eccleston. I really liked the Dave Tennant. Matt Smith was fine. Um, of course, that's where What's Her Face? Um, what's the tall redhead? I can't remember her name either. She, uh, she debuted in that, you know, that was where she got popular. Um, I liked her. I mean, I liked the Doctor Who's. I just, it just, it didn't seem like Doctor, I was watching Doctor Who. I felt like I was just watching some, like, of the time British science fiction show that just happened to be called Doctor Who. Because it was just, it was too, the production quality was too good for it. I like it being shot on video. I like it to have that uh, just campy, cheesy look to it with bad special effects because it, it, it's of that time and it's what I remember. And of course, you know, I'm probably going to go over this a thousand times and you'll see my obsession with Leela. And I was obsessed with Leela. Um, and the funny thing, I was like, I only want to watch the Leela episodes. And then uh, when she uh, when she wasn't in like her, you know, her Amazon outfit, her leather, when she was just like in regular clothes or like you know, like uh, Victorian clothes and stuff like ah, I was like it was like I get I got literally my just my frown turned upside or my smile turned upside down as instantly just I don't want to watch this. Um, you know that's how I was as a kid. I kind of been like that as an adult too. But I'm I'm currently watching. You can you can catch all the Doctor Who episodes in this the fourth Doctor episodes on Tubi right now. So I've been catching up and watching. Some of the ones that I've missed that I don't remember seeing or had been so long. Um, and again, I'm just watching the Leela episodes. <laughs> uh, I, I might venture into the rest of the Tom Baker, you know, seasons with the other companions. But like I said, Leela was my favorite. Um, and it's funny how little... I mean, Leela wasn't in it a lot either. She was only in a few episodes. We'll get to that too. Um, but... Uh, and I, of course, then I'm going to tell my story, and I've got a, an item that I just ordered that I've, I've unboxed, but it's it's got, uh, we'll, we'll pull it out here in just a minute. So let's first, let's click over to, um, sorry, I'm going to close my work files, uh, let's save it, and let's click over to, um, this is the Wikipedia entry for uh, for Leela. Because, <laughs> like I said, I'm being hyper specific, so we're gonna go straight to the Leela episodes. So, um, Louise Jameson, of course, obviously is the uh, the actress who played her. Um, and uh, oh, she did in nine stories, forty episodes. But here's the thing: do they consider like a part an episode? I'm not sure, because I know like it, it gets kind of annoying too. It's like you watch these like you know, small segments of the show, like part one, part two, part three, and then I'm assuming that's what they mean. So, Leela appeared in, yeah, nine storylines. So technically, to me, it's nine episodes, um, even, you know, there are multi-part episodes, but all of the Doctor stuff was like that. I don't remember it being like that in high school with that other Doctor. Um, what is his name? Oh. Oh, I don't remember his name. Anyways, um, but, uh, so yeah, technically, so it's nine stories. That's, to me, that's what it, nine episodes. I just consider all of those parts just one long episode. Um, and, uh, it, yeah, it's 19, from 1977 to 1978. Now, it might have aired here in the States on, like, one of the UHF stations or whatever as it was airing on the BBC. I mean, it seems like... I mean, like I said, I was in high school, those episodes were brand new. Because um, I remember getting, like, Starlog magazine, and I think even the Star Trek... No, they had a Doctor Who magazine at the time. And the Doctor Who magazine was talking about, like, the current episodes. 
the current doctor and it was seemed fresh like literally it's like i just watched that episode um but uh yeah so i'm assuming that's what it is and then they just re-ran them into the 80s you know into uh which was you know only a couple years later um you know and it could have yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm assuming that's what happened. They probably got a batch of episodes, and they could have, whatever the doctor was after Tom Baker, I can't remember his name was, you know, the guy looks kind of like Ed Bagley Jr. guy. Um, I think that's like a doctor after him, uh, which would have been the fifth doctor. He, um, I think that, I think that was on, because I remember seeing that sort of too, but I didn't really, it, I didn't get it. I didn't understand why is there, why, you know, it was, I said I was a young kid, kind of a dumb young kid, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't get why, uh, why is there another, what? what's going on here? I don't understand. I didn't know, it made me mad when Leela left, or when I didn't see Leela and I saw some other girl, I was like, who's this? I mean, the other girls were, they're pretty hot too, but I mean, <laughs> it wasn't Leela, it was not Leela, and uh, I kept seeing her and I was like, going, who is that? And it's like, what, what happened to Leela? Um, like I said, to me, <laughs> It's like my dad, you know, my dad, he would always refer to Doctor Who, or sorry, he would always refer to like Dukes of Hazard as, you know, hey Tim, come on, Daisy's on. He would never refer to it as the Dukes of Hazard. he'd always refer to it as Daisy, or, you know, he called the Charlie's Angels, that was his girls, I'm going to watch my girls. <laughs> um, that's how, uh, that's kind of how I kind of became with Doctor Who, it's just like, I, you know, she was the Daisy Duke on the show, because obviously... You know, they put her in that outfit to uh, to get people like, you know, my dad, who actually hated science fiction, so he would never watch Doctor Who. But anyways, um, it would get, you know, dads that did like science fiction that would watch it, get the dads to watch it. So, um, you know, and it worked as me as a kid. Like I said, as soon as I saw those legs, I was just like, oh my gosh, got to watch this. Um, it was not, obviously it was just her outfit. I just liked her hair, her, her brown hair, and her eyes. Um, and then there was that whole thing where it's like, what happened to her eyes? Why are her eyes dark in this episode? Why are they light in this episode? Um, there's a reason behind that. I don't, you know, if you don't spoiler alert, she gets blinded. Um, I guess the whole thing was that they put in the real story. If you read the the, the liner notes, it basically says that she had a, a reaction. I think or she. She wore, wore the contacts and it, it, it bothered her eyes or something, or I can't remember what it was. And she didn't want to wear them anymore. And uh, so then they wrote it into the show that she gets blinded and then it permanently changes her eye color back to her real eye color, which I believe is green. Um, so, you know, she, she had this like auburn brown hair with these green eyes. I love that look back then. <laughs> I still love that look. But I mean, um, I said very striking. Uh, and she kind of had the, I mean, she obviously wasn't Catherine Bach, but she kind of had this weird kind of southerny kind of Daisy Duke feel to her, even though she was British, if that makes any sense. Um, but, uh, you know, but the thing is, I, 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 even though I was obsessed with Leela, I also liked Doc, the Doctor Who. I mean, I liked, I liked Tom Baker. I thought he was also very charismatic and very, um, like, uh, I don't, it's like you, you felt like, I would watch the show as a kid and I would feel like calm. It's like when Batman, she's like, oh, Batman's there, I feel calm or whatever. Even when they're, like, when they're both on the ropes, you know, into trouble, right? I always just felt this, like, sense of calm, like, it's, everything's going to be okay, the doctor's there. Just like, you know, when He-Man shows up or, you know, fill in the blank superhero, you know. It's like you, as a kid, you just have this sense of calm, like, oh, they showed up, everything's going to be fine. Um... And, you know, I like that. I like that about the show. I don't know if kids have that feel. I don't know if I talked to my son about this. And he might be a little old now that he's 12. But um, I don't know if he felt felt that way or kids today now if they feel that way. Where, like, they watch a show and they see their hero. And uh, and they get, like, this sense of calm. Like, uh, it's almost like, you know, it's like, oh, well, you're, like, the protector is there. I don't know. That's how I felt. Um and I said, I love the long scarf. I always thought the long scarf was so cool. I had eventually, in high school, had gotten the long scarf from the same guy that I got. Not this copy, because I just got this copy, but my original copy of the uh, role-playing game. I got that from uh, a guy at Tour Tour Tuesday, and he also uh, sold me the scarf. He had like, a bunch of stuff in the back of it. 
I don't know, I might have told this story. He had a, I can't remember what kind of car. It was a hatchback of some sort. He was like a punk rock. He had like a leather jacket with like punk pins and like maiden pins and everything all over him. He had like a, I kind of, I kind of like, I, you know, kind of take it. He was older too. He was like in his 20s, you know, I was in high school. And he kind of like, uh, I don't know, I kind of like looked up to him. I thought he was cool. Um, and uh, he had a really attractive girlfriend he used to bring too. Uh, she was all punky too with like a plaid, you know, mini skirt and like Doc Martin boots and, uh, you know, and that stuff was, you know, at the time that stuff was kind of new-ish. It wasn't like into the 90s where that became a thing. Um, you know, she had like jet black hair. And she's like, oh, I really liked his girlfriend. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, but they would they would show up and he had this hatchback and it was like I was like going out to his hatchback like he had drugs or something and he's like hey come on out to my car I'll show you some stuff <laughs> um, and it was all like science fiction crap and he had like just tons of tons of Doctor Who stuff um, and he had the role playing game which uh, I think he just gave that to me he just he's here take it uh, I think he sold me the scarf for uh, like ten bucks. Um, and then he had like a whole, like a whole envelope of like photographs, like glossy photographs. Um, I'm trying to, I think I found some of them. I'm trying to find them. Uh, and he said, uh, I said, oh, I said, are those for sale? He goes, he goes, you don't need, you don't, he goes, you don't need to uh, buy them. He says, here's the thing. He says, write a letter to the BBC, right? And send them with an international reply coupon and they will send you back a ton of shit. And I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, they'll send you like all kinds of stuff back. And uh, he was absolutely right. I wrote the BBC, got an international reply coupon, sent it back, told him I was a huge fan. I said I was obsessed with Lilo. Lilo is my favorite. And uh, they sent me back like literally an envelope, thick envelope, just filled with photographs, like 8x10 glossies, these 4x6 glossies, black and whites. Um, just all these like promo photographs that they took on the sets um, of Tom Baker and Leela and, and just a ton a lot of said I have some of them I found pictures of them on Google but uh, some of these Leela photographs and I was like oh my gosh it was like a cherish it was like my my, my <laughs> you know my secret stash of Leela photographs um, but uh, anyways so yeah so let's go through the episode she's she was in um, I guess this is more of a, this is the Leela episode. This isn't even really the Doctor Who episode. Um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, Faces of Evil was the first, or Face of Evil, uh, was her first show. Okay, so season 14. So she shows up in season 14. The Face of Evil is the first episode. Um, that was one of the books that I had, too. I had gotten those books before. And then that's right about the time I started to actually read the books. And because I couldn't find the episodes, you know, it was hard to get the episodes. That guy had the episodes, and people had, like, videotape VHS copies of Doctor Who episodes, but they were hard to get, and there's no internet back then. So, in order to, like, kind of catch the story, I had to read these books. So I ended up like, oh, I've got a couple of them that I've had for years, so I might as well start reading them. And then, uh, anyways, I just put it in order with, um, uh, thrift books. I found three of them. Actually, there's four of them, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it down to a dull I, I got one free book because I ordered on stuff before, um, so I had to only pay for two of them. I think I got it for like 15 bucks, or like 12. Well, it was 15 bucks plus the... I got free shipping. I got whatever. Also, I got three of the books for 15 bucks, so that's pretty cool. I've got, I got The Face of Evil, I got uh, Talons of Wang Chang, and I believe I got The Underworld, or... Robots of Death. I can't remember. Or maybe Invisible Iron. I gotta check which ones they have. Oh, yeah, three of them. Uh, and I don't know, did they... I'm wondering if they made all nine books or nine stories that she was in. I have to check that out. Um, I know they're numbered, those books. They're like these... They're, I, I'll show them to you in the photographs. They're like these uh, uh, not small novels, like maybe 200-page novels um, of the episodes. Like little novelizations. Uh, there's actually... You can get... You can. There's... Rate, there's uh, audio books of it on Amazon. It's actually, they're read by Leela, by, uh, what's her face? Um, that was her name? I always called her Leela. Oh, Louise Jameson. <laughs> I don't know her real name. I just keep calling her Leela. It's funny. Um, 
But, uh, but yeah, Face of Evil is her debut episode. It's kind of like when he discovers her, and she's like this savage, uh, you know, Amazon type of girl. Not she's really an Amazon. She's like just a savage, like, character. Okay, a savage human, I guess, on this other planet. Um, Robots of Death. That's a great episode. I like really like Robots of Death. Um, Talons of Wang Chang is a great episode. However, she's never in the outfit <laughs> this episode. She's in, like, this Victorian stuff. And I gotta say... Uh, the guy, the whatever his name is, Wang Chang or whatever his name is, Wang Chang. He's a he's a British guy. Uh, who does a voice like a this? Uh, it's extremely, <laughs> extremely racist uh, version of it. But I mean, it was seventies. You know what I mean? It's just like, hey, we need a Chinese guy. Well, we don't have a Chinese actor who can do these lines. So let's get a, a, a British guy and we'll paint him up and give him a, a, a pointy mustache and you know. Make them seem Chinese and have them a talker like a dissa. <laughs> a lightning whip. <laughs> Sorry, that's something else. Um, but uh, I, it's fun to talk in his voice. But, anyways, that episode's a good episode. Uh, although she's not in the outfit. Um, Horror Fang Rock, not in the outfit either. But that's a great episode. Invisible Enemy, I believe, yeah, because that's when they discover K9. She is in, uh, in the outfit there. Um, they kind of changed her outfit, too. They made it. A little bit more revealing and like a lighter leather. Um, I, I I like the original better, but uh, but definitely the more revealing is good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the image of Fendal, I think that's where I left off. On because uh, I yeah, I had two more episodes. I I think Underworld was the last um, episode. It was Underworld that, when K Nine showed up. I can't remember. That was Underworld was the last. Um, the last episode I watched on Tubi, so I still have two episodes to go. I believe I've got to hit this one at that animation time. I said I might go and watch more of the Tom Baker Doctors, of, you know, just to finish out uh, the Tom Baker stuff with the other uh, companions. But, um, but yeah, these are definitely my favorite episodes, and it's not because they're the best episodes, I'm because they're best story, well, well, well written. They're the best episodes because. Leela. <laughs> That's it. Um, of course, there's radio dramas, blah, blah, blah. They get into all this. You can obviously go to, um, go to uh, Wikipedia and look all this up here. Just go over some, some photos here. There she is. That's a great, that's a great picture. That's one of the ones I had the glossy of, too. You know, I, there's no way I could have gotten it. I, I didn't, I don't think she ever made any U.S. con appearances back in those days, and uh, it's not like I could have got her to sign it. Um, but uh, yeah, there's some great photographs and stuff. Like I said, it's funny. He reminds this, he reminds me of a, like a lot a lot of stuff. Whenever I see these photographs, I keep thinking he was uh, like the like this the uh, the missing member of yes too just he's british and he's creepy looking just like the guys from rush from yes and uh i don't know i i just kind of uh, associate uh tom baker with yes for some reason it's like he's a weird kind of uh rick wakeman slash chris squire slash john anderson looking weirdo <laughs> uh I remember that when she got all strapped down. Um, I said, great pictures. Like I said, that's her, that, that is her original cast and the more darker one. Um, I think they probably complained that, hey, you can't see her legs enough. You got too much junk hanging all over it. So they, they kind of, uh, they kind of made her new costume a lot more reveal, a lot more simple. Uh, here's those, here are those books. There's Underworld, sorry, they're, sorry, this is small. Um, Talons of Wang Chang, I got that one coming. Uh, so I got some small photographs. I'm trying to get the bigger photographs up here. Uh, I guess, what am I doing? I guess the easiest way is to just, that way I can just blow them up. There we go. Now we can see the pictures better. Um, that, by the way, is the, I love that picture because it's the uh, picture from the, uh, the box of the Doctor Who being, um, there she is all 
all tied up or all uh, strapped down to the table. I, I just love the dynamic too between them. I, apparently, he was um, like he didn't. That's how they didn't like her. It's just that he didn't think she was like up to the job. Like she wasn't a good enough actress, and so she was. She he kind of was really uh, like you know, distant with her, I guess, until, like, the one episode where she did a great job, and he thought, oh, hey, kid, you kind of did it now. You know, you, you proved your chops. So, uh, he, uh, he kind of changes his tune, which is weird. I never picked up on that as a kid. I didn't really get that. I don't think I picked up that as a high school student. Um, there's one, there's that one book, there's that little, little guy in the, uh, Outfit. I guess he was supposed to be a robot or whatever. Um, yep. Yeah, see, she's definitely showing some more leg there. I, I love. I, you can still. I, I. I. I sold my scarf off to um, my one buddy. He if he watches this video, which I think he does, he'll know that he got my cool scarf. Um, I traded it off to him for something. Can't remember. Or he bought it off me. I can't remember. But uh, I wish I never got rid of that. I wonder if he still has it. I, you can get it again. You can get like 30 bucks on Amazon. And, you know. But supposedly the one, that one, though, was he had, this is the guy from, you know, the guy from Tora Tora Tuesday. He said that he sent away and he got the pattern uh, from the BBC. And then he had his aunt make it uh, handmade. So I don't know how true that was. But if it was true, I mean, that's pretty, pretty amazing. So that was a handmade scarf. But I mean, it. They can make them production line them too, but like I said, you can get it on Amazon. I might pick it up at some point. Get my uh, my Doctor Who scarf back. The whole joke is just this really. And it was a really long scarf. It was probably shoot, it's probably six feet long or twelve feet long. You know, he, my one friend who has it's very tall, a six seven, and he has it. A, you know, he would wear it. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely get that back. Like I said, some of these photographs I had. That I got from the BBC. Um, I don't think I had that one. I not maybe yes maybe it was that one. I remember. I think I got a picture over here. There's you could see the Daleks more. Um, oh, there they are. So there they are. Not in today, but I think they're even older than that now. But this is, I'd say, probably in the last twenty years. You know, sometime in the new millennium. The you know, they're obviously getting older, but uh, I believe they're both still alive, too. I know he's like in his 90s. She's probably in her 70s, I guess. But uh, she's so striking, too. I, I, you know, and tell you the truth, I mean, I like the brown eyes, but when the blue eyes was just, it didn't caught me off guard as a kid. I was just like, oh, she's such striking or green eyes or whatever. I think they're blue, actually. Um, but uh, she had pretty striking eyes. Uh, she, and she she reminds me of, like, five different people, too. I keep always say this, you know, everybody, to me, everybody reminds me of somebody. You know, I, so I, already, I always know a person that person reminds me of. And it's true. <laughs> but, uh, again, she reminds me of, like, three or four different people. Um... Yeah, she had so much freckles on her, too. I guess you can see it, too. I don't know if they played up her. I mean, obviously, I think the reason she didn't want to wear the contacts, or she had a reaction to wearing the brown contacts, so I don't think they would have put contacts in her to make her eyes look more blue. That would kind of defeat the purpose, but um, uh, they're probably just that striking. Yeah, that's, that was the newer costume where you could see some more leg. There's K9 there. You know, the whole thing with Canine, that she's in the episode where they discover Canine for the first time, too. Um, there's Canine there. I think I had that photograph. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I think, was it this one? No, that's, that's just a reverse of this one. I had one, and I don't know if I have it here, but I didn't have that specific one. I had one that was very close to that. It was basically, obviously, it was another photograph they took on that set. And... It wasn't black and white. It might have been this photo, but it was colorized, or it was color. Um, she's wearing her legs. Yeah. 
I like her hair better too. And I like her hair. Her hair's different there. Oops. There's a crazy look on his face. Yeah, I love that, like, the very 70s kind of, like, British kind of smoky, weird... I love that all of the... What you're seeing here, it just doesn't translate to the new stuff. It just... Like, if they were even throw to shoot... Why would they? But, I mean, even if they were to go back and shoot it in the same way, I don't think it would have the same effect or feel. Maybe it would. But I just love this. It was almost, like, dreamlike. You know, just these sets. And it's probably because I was young and I was a kid and I saw this stuff. You know. But, regardless, it, uh... I don't know if I liked her with the hair up. She would put her, I think she had her hair up in a couple episodes where she wasn't wearing the costume. And that's from the first episode she shows up in. Um... Or she, so she's got the, <laughs> that's crazy. She's got the dark contacts in. I don't know, maybe I do like the dark, almost black look to her eyes. Uh, maybe I like that more. Uh, I, this is the, this, I had this photograph. Uh, and it's one of those classic ones. So when I think of, like I said, when I think of Doctor Who, I think of that. I mean, I mean, I think of Leela, but I mean, I think of, Tom Baker, his crazy, the crazy look on his face, wearing the hat and the scarf, surrounded by Daleks. I just, that's what I think of when I think of Doctor Who. I know everybody, I know it's subjective, and I know it sounds weird, but it's just like, certain things, it's just like anime, you know, Robotech. When I see, uh, what's his face, um, Mickey Moto's character designs, that to me is anime. Nothing else is anime. Um, same thing with this, when I see that, I think that is Doctor Who. Um, so if you showed me anything else, I'd be like, huh? There's there's one of the other books. I think I got that book coming, too. Um, it's weird. Yeah, see, it just, it's just this look. Maybe it's the set. It's probably the set, the light coming down. But it just has, like, a certain look to it. Um, and it just reminds me of that. Um, that's a great episode. That is a great episode. Uh, that's a great photograph too. That's really cool. I th nah, maybe I'm getting, maybe I just I just saw this in a magazine or something. But that's a cool. Uh, I I really like that. Looks neat. Again, it's got that that look with the lighting and everything, and the light casting off her knife. This has a cool look to it. She is combing her hair. Um, I just love that pouty look on her face. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> a little twit look. I love that little twit look she's got. She's just all pouty. And you got these two knuckleheads here. That's a great episode, too. That's when they go back to Gallifrey. Um, and then the doctor becomes the, t the, the, whatever, the Supreme Chancellor, or whatever, I can't remember what they call him, what his title is, um, of, yeah, of the Time Lords. It's a great episode. Um, she's with the crossbow. I, I said I had a photograph, a color photograph of her with the crossbow. Ah, she looks good there too, with the, those eyes. Her, it's her, I don't think that's, to, man, that is, well, like I said, it's probably in the last 10, 15 years. Um, still got those eyes, though. I mean, obviously, you can't get rid of your eyes. <laughs> it's funny, too. You know, here's the other thing. This, this is odd. I mean, I know it's like a thing that like a lot of older women do when they, when they start going white and they have that white stripe, but that was the other person. When I was a kid, I liked Leela, but when I started reading X-Men, for some reason, and I don't know why, I thought that the woman who played in our, her... I thought she reminded me of Rogue. Like, I thought to myself, if anybody's going to play Rogue in a Rogue movie, this is, I used to think this way back in the day, like 1984, 40 years ago, I said, uh, I said, you know what would be cool is if uh, a girl who played Leela played Rogue. She just kind of reminded me of her, just kind of had that feel. She had the auburn, you know, brownish auburn hair. 
Um, you know, but Rogue had that Rogue stripe. It's funny, now that, you know, she got older, she started to get white-gray hair, and it's like she has the Rogue stripe. <laughs> That's weird. Um, I don't know. But yeah, that was the, uh, and that's why I like Rogue. I like that, just that, whatever. Well, she's got it. Rogue has it. Like I said, there's a neighbor that looked like her. There was a, uh, heck, actually, there was even a porn star at the time um, that I liked to, uh, that reminded me of her. Um, there's a wrestler that reminded me of her. Uh, what's that episode? I don't remember the bucket here boots. I mean, I guess I kind of do. I guess I never really paid attention to what pants he was wearing. Because, I mean, obviously it's the coat, the hair, the hat, the jacket, the crazy eyes. Uh, she has the dark hair. God, she's so attractive. She had those dark eyes here. He's got the smarmy look back there. There's, okay, so that's one of the books. That was, that was the book. That was the book that I... I saw that book at the bookstore, and I go, Oh, there's a Dr. Who, who, who book, and it's got Leela in it. And uh, it was like a buck ninety-five, whatever. I remember I ended up getting that book, and then I never read it, because I couldn't read. And then I eventually read it. Um, well, I got it on the way now, coming from Thrift's book, so I'll have it again, and I can sit down and read it. Um, again, that, so yeah, so that might have been the photograph. I know was, you can see the Daleks... Or in the photograph I had, and he did have a crazy look on his face. That might be it. But um, yeah, is it? To me, that's that's Doctor Who. Uh, they're there when they first discover K9. They're there with K9. There they get when they're older. I guess not, I mean, not over, but more recent. I think that's the end of the list. Um, all right, let's get into, uh, pull the other camera up. Let's get into the uh, role-playing game here. I just want to mention this. So, again, the, this came out in 1985, so it's not a 1984 deal. It came out in 1985, and I had seen this. It's I seen it. I seen it at a... Um, uh, Joe's Hobby Shop, and I looked at it, and of course, really the only reason I wanted, even as a kid, when I first came out, was I just wanted, it's like, oh, it's got Leela in it, and Leela's right on the cover. Um, again, this is 1985, the set came out from FASA, who also does, um, did the uh, Battletech at the time, um, and uh, Shadowrun, what else did FASA do? They did the uh, Star Trek. Uh, role role playing game. Um, that's another one I had. I, I kind of like to get that one again too. But uh, anyways, so this kid come out. I never got it in 1985. I wanted it, but at the end, I kind of ran into the same problem I have now. Is who am I going to play it with? Nobody really likes Doctor Who that much as much as I do. Um, so when I was in high school, like I said, it's down at Tour Tour Tuesday, and uh, that, where I was out that guy's car as hatchback and he was going through his stuff and he pulls this out he just goes here i go oh the doctor who role play game oh i really wanted to get that he said here and he just handed it to me he just gave it to me i was like really he's like yeah he says i don't i don't i'm not gonna play it um he, so he just handed it to me and he gave it to me for free and then uh i had it for the longest time and i don't have no idea where that copy of it went um but uh, it eventually, uh, I, don't, I don't know if these are the original six-sided dice that came with it. Maybe they are. Maybe they just threw random six-sided dice in there. But it, it's three books. Um, I did have the FASA Corporation. Yeah, it's Star Trek. Uh, and then the data books and stuff. So there's just a little, little advertisement comes in it. So you've got, I guess start with the first book, you've got... Like anything else, like Dungeons and Dragons, you got the player's handbook, um, which it's it's a fairly it's not it's only like forty eight pages, it's not really a big you know document I guess documents a very big book, um, it's all in black it had this like kind of weird cover to it it's got like this almost like a, not like a parchment but like this weird cover stock, um, and uh, you know it's all black and white on the inside. Uh, 
it's funny. I, I, I was like, I could do better than that drawing, and I ended up drawing Leela and the Doctor a bunch of times. And I remember going back down to Tour Tour Tuesday, showing showing the guy. He's like, Wow, that's really good. And I was like, Yeah, I, I just don't like the drawings in there. I mean, I like the photographs in here, but they're not not very big. But I didn't like the drawings. Uh, you know, and of course that drawing there was one right off the cover of the of the novel, but that's the black and white version of it, which I thought was pretty cool. That's a good drawing. I redrew that one as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, it goes through obviously how to generate a doctor or a character. You can either play as a, I believe you play as a doctor, or you play as a. Um, a companion or another NPC or another companion NPC or not well you wouldn't be an NPC it'd be a player character but I think you play as one of the other ones um, uh, here's the thing I never got to play this I've never gotten to play this I always wanted to I've had it for the longest time and then of course I got rid of it I may have just gotten rid of it because nobody wanted to play it but for nostalgic purposes, and I saw it for really dirt cheap. And they said it was in near-mint condition, which I would say these books are in pretty much near-mint condition. The only thing they said, I actually made a mistake. They had two copies of it, and they're right around the same price. And I, one had said fair condition for the, or very, very good condition for the interior books. And then it had a, a good condition for the box. And then I saw near mint, and I thought it said near mint for both, but it said near mint for just the interior books, which it's correct, but it said that the book, the box was in fair condition. Now, I'm not going to complain because the box is still intact. It's got a little bit of a crinkle in the corner here, but the box is still in great shape. And the box I had, even though, like when that guy gave it to me, um, it had probably rolled around in the back of his car for a long time, so it wasn't in the best of condition either. So it's about the same condition that. That was in um, but uh, so I'm not gonna complain about it. I should have clicked on the other one but who knows maybe the other books had markings in there or something I don't know I'm um, sorry it smells very similar it smells like old old books um, but uh, I, yeah one of the, one of my uh, bucket lists I guess is to sit, find somebody and sit down and actually play this game maybe that's where I keep seeing that photograph The crazy one where he's standing next to the do the Dalek. He's got the crazy look on his face. Um, but uh, yeah, my bucket list is one of these days I want to be able to uh, play the game. I'd actually show combat and stuff with the uh, so they use a grid system. That's pretty much just like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, they show movement just like in D and D. How things are adjacent and whatnot um, shows how a shotgun pattern works uh, I don't really give stats for do they have the needle gun in there I remember seeing the needle gun from um, the uh, Cornelius Chronicles uh, stuff I just thought that was very British too so it's Michael Moorcock but um, yeah, so you got your, uh, and then you got a character sheet, of course, in the back, but you've got your player's handbook, or player's manual, then you got your game math, game operations man, you want know, pretty much your GM's guide, or game master. Um, this one's bigger, this one's a 75 page book. Um, again, I, I just, I drew better picture, I drew better art than that. It just, the faces, I did a better job on the faces, I think. And obviously they're drawing it from those photographs using those as reference I just I did a better job I wish I still had some of those drawings but. and then of course this one goes into obviously how to run the actual game it gives you uh, some NPCs in here some villains some characters there's no monsters per se I guess if you want to call a doll like a monster um, but uh, you know just like any any dungeon master's guide or game master's guide, it just kind of goes over all of that stuff. Um, and then the last book they give you is a source book for field agents, which again, 
I guess this kind of, yeah, it's got creatures and stuff in it. So this kind of works as your monster manual, essentially. Uh, a lot of great art in here. You got, you know, what's his face? Devros, or whatever his name is. The leader of the Daleks. Devros. Um, Devros. Uh, you got Cybermen in here. You know. I mean, if you're a Doctor Who fan, you know all this stuff. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is pretty much your monster manual. Um, so, yeah, and then it also shows all the different, uh, like, tech, techy tech stuff. Disruptors, blasters, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I think the sonic screwdrivers are in here. Jelly Bebes. They got Jelly Bebes in here. Jelly Bebe. <laughs> you want a Jelly Bebe? <laughs> um, I love Jelly Babies. I don't even know what a Jelly Baby is, but I like all those jelly gummy snacks or candies. Those are my favorite. These small, multicolored fruit flavor confections are strongly recommended by the doctor, according to his reports. They can serve almost any purpose. The doctor records that eating them provides a quick way to raise the blood sugar level making them a useful source of quick energy and a reasonable nutritional supplement in a form of easy to carry and use in the field. In addition, most human-like beings have an inborn taste predilection for the, in for the intake of flavored sugars. It's true. And so they are often a good trade item, avoiding the problem of obtaining local coinage when traveling, the bright colors and pleasing tastes often make an impression on ever even the most primitive beings. In the obviously in those episodes, you always like, I like to be talking to just some you know some minion or some NPC, and he's just like, "Carol, jolly baby, jolly baby, jolly baby." Say way he talks and says it. Um, yeah, sonic suppressor, sonic screwdriver. There you go. Uh, of course, if you don't know a sonic screwdriver, is this multifunctional tool is perhaps the most versatile and useful addition to the standard TARDIS maintenance and repair kit. About the shape of a large fountain pen with a ring and cone sonic emitter at one end and sonic screwdriver producing pulses of ultrasonic, or sorry, ultrasound. These pulses create vibrations in solid objects, particularly of metal, which can be controlled to produce kinetic energy. So that's your sonic screwdriver. Um, the hell is that? Thing? It's just a yo-yo. Okay. Um, Janice Thorn is that the one they used in the one episode? The thorns, the poison thorns. I can't remember. But I, you, you watch the episodes and stuff. Like all the cool stuff that's in Doctor Who. That's all in. Uh, it's all in here. So, like I said. It's a great book just for just sitting around reading, just like what I just read to you. Just, just fun, you know. And it puts me in such a good mood and puts a smile on my face when I see it, because it takes me back to that time. And of course, it's all about the, for the most part. I mean, the other doctors are briefly in it, but for the most part, Leela and uh, Tom Baker are pretty much featured throughout the book as like the main doctor, which is another reason why I love this game so much. So, I've got that now. I'll have some books coming. All I need myself now is a Doctor Who scarf, and I'll pretty much have all the Doctor Who stuff that I had uh, back in the day. So, all right. I guess we'll end this video a little early. So, again, hey, who's your favorite Doctor? Uh, I've been having a conversation with a client at Line about Doctor Who just recently, which is funny because he talked, he hit me up about Doctor Who right when that thing was delivered. And I was like, oh, that's a weird coincidence. But, um, yeah. Uh, we were talking about his favorite. He likes all the newer stuff. Do you like the... When I say do, I mean the last 20 years or so. Do you like that stuff? Like the, I guess the ninth Doctor on up to the current Doctor? Do you like the female Doctor? You know, do you, are you jumping in the bandwagon with all the hate about that or whatever? I, I personally don't care about that stuff. I don't... Here's the thing. Is the show good... Is it well written? Um, you know, that's my big thing. I prefer the Doctor to be male, yes, but I also prefer the Doctor to be Tom Baker. So, you know, I'm being super highly specific. Um, 
you know, and I and I like the dynamic of the older male gentleman like myself and the young, you know, attractive girl companion. I just, you know, it's a male fantasy, you know, which I have, and uh, a lot of other dudes have too. So it's kind of, and that's what kind of sold the show for the most part. I mean, outside of, I mean, there are the diehard science fiction fans that love all the lore, you know, and love all that stuff, and they love diehard science fiction, but. You know, at the end of the day, I think a lot of its popularity came down to obviously the choice of cast that they chose, and that, there was that dynamic, the dynamic of the older, smart, can think of himself out of a box kind of guy, you know, with the doctor, and then and they go into these adventures, and he's got the TARDIS, you know, and go anywhere in time, and then you've got, uh, you know, the attractive companion, girl, female companion that, that goes along with him. Again, it's just a it's a male male fantasy. So, you know, if they want to dink around with that and you know, kind of get away from that, that's fine. Um, but I think you're losing a little bit of the the charm of the show and charm of the, the characters. Um, so, it is what it is. All right. So I'm gonna let you go on this one. Remember, like and subscribe. And again, I encourage you to let me know. You know, you can just sit around and call me a a creep for creeping on uh, Leela the entire episode. Hey, that too. I don't care. Um, I'll pony up to it. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Let me know what you think uh, of the show. Let me know if you think about Doctor. Do you share the same opinion I have? Are you of the same age? You're like, that is the Doctor. That is Doctor Who. It's definitely uh, Tom Baker. So, you know, or do you have a particular doc that you like, you know, and a, or a particular companion more specifically? Let me know and hit me up. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next episode. All right, take care. Bye-bye.